Well, it's such an honor for me to be able to talk about Judeo Krishnamurti. Ah, what a precious human being and a gift to humanity, I believe. Uh, Krishnamurti was a philosopher, a writer, um, a thinker, and a speaker. There's lots of footage of his the talks that he gave, um, lots of them on YouTube, thankfully, and he wrote dozens of books. So uh, he left a lot for us. Um, now, Jiddu Krishnamurti has his moon in Sagittarius. He has Aquarius rising and Taurus is his sun sign. But I want to start with the fact that he was born under the phase of the full moon. Because to me, this is an important aspect when we would want to understand um, that exit that he made on that life altering day in um, August of 1929, when he made that beautiful speech, that remarkable speech, I maintain that truth is a pathless land. Um, now, uh, and Krishnamurti was designated to be uh, no less than the second messiah, uh, the new world teacher. He was discovered in his ho hometown in South India by the then leaders of the theosophical movement. And they saw in him, um, they saw this aura about him and a divine spark which they uh, felt would uh, uh, arise and come through and then to that end he was uh he was groomed and educated and you know in order to uh, uh become uh, the, the guru of of the whole organization this is this is i mean uh, a, a spiritual position you can't get any higher than that, you know. Um, but what he did on that day was he disavowed the whole idea of being a guru and having followers. He, 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 he said, there's one beautiful line that he, actually not from this speech, he's one of the conversations that he has. He says, when man lost touch, with nature, the priests came in. So what he's saying is about himself. Now, he says, I am not, I do not want to be a mediator between you, you know, you people that want to follow me or anyone else and the truth or God, um, because he says, you as well as I have to look inside and answer those questions, each one within themselves. Now, um, on that day, he just broke away and he dissolved the association to the, I assume, astonishment and great disappointment, probably anger and who knows what of, uh, of the, you know the, those those people who had discovered him and uh, and all the the thousands of, of people who were the followers, ex just expecting um, to have him show them the way to enlightenment. Okay, so I mean to okay. So the full moon karma, the karma of a person who is born under this phase, is to um get out of situations where they feel stuck caged in uh and trapped static where the, the circumstances are, are static there's no no movement you know no freedom and um the way to break that karma is to get out okay to make the definitive exit so going back to that speech he says the moment you follow someone, you cease to follow the truth. And then he lays out what he intends to do, uh, you know, what he decided 
that his role um, in the world is, and he says, I want to do a certain thing. I'm reading from that speech. I want to do a certain thing in the world, and I'm going to do it with unwavering concentration. Now let's listen for Sagittarian and Aquarius themes in the next uh, two lines. I'm concerning myself with one, with only one essential thing, to set man free. I desire to free him and her from all cages, from all fears, and not to found religions, new sects, nor to establish new theories and new philosophies. <laughs> Gosh, no, I'm just thinking about the, um, you know, the sh shock probably of uh, the, the, the people that gathered uh, around him that day. Okay, wow. So the full moon phase is a point in the evolution of the soul where there's this ability to come about um, impartial, very clear understandings and to go after them, uh, as he says, with unwavering concentration. And there's this um, ability and need to not only, you know, well, I reached my conclusions, thank you very much, but there is a need to really make a difference in the world and to share those realizations that you've, uh, un you know, understood that you see as being important. And because this is the fifth phase, it correlates with the fifth sign Leo and its generosity, you know, there's um, there's this outgoingness, outgoingness, if that's a word, about a person uh, who's born in, uh, in this phase. And, and then uh, the, the, the image or, you know, the metaphor of the full moon is because everything is seen. It's a full moon, you know, it's, there's no, nothing is hidden. The person himself is completely and 100 percent engaged in the world everything that's on the inside must come out and express okay well it cannot i mean for good or for bad you know it can also be i mean it's krishnamurti was a, a great soul but uh you can also express something that doesn't help or uplift anyone <laughs> But that's just um, a distraction. Now, when I was talking about his Sagittarius moon, okay, let's concentrate on that Sagittarius moon. Because Krishnamurti was a philosopher, and one of the archetypes of Sagittarius is the philosopher. And then we have the teacher, the gypsy. And uh, let's go into those archetypes. Sagittarius is about the expansion of consciousness, the expansion of um, experience and understanding. Sagittarius is on a quest to understand the meaning of life, the big questions, you know, what is the truth with a capital T? How can I access it? Um, what is, why are we here? What is my place within this whole in the universe and in life, you know, in the, on this planet. And there's um, a constant, it's like being on a constant journey and acquiring knowledge and, and becoming wiser for that. But it's this non-ending um, quest. And of course, uh, quest and question, the words are connected. And uh, if you watch Krishnamurti or, or read his, his uh books and, and diaries and, and et cetera, he's always raising questions and he's always using the words, let's, let's explore this idea, this question. Let's investigate. Let's look before we make judgments. That's very Taurus. Before we 
come to to a conclusion or or think that we have the answer let's let's investigate you know let's let's also ask more questions that's that's incredibly sagittarian to me um and there's this built-in frustration in sagittarius in my point of view and i have a sagittarius moon as well so i know something about this because there's a hunger really a hunger to understand and find meaning and to expand um uh as I said, and um, also to see possibilities everywhere. Sagittarius needs to pack seven lifetimes into one. You know, it's always on the go. It's always... But the frustration or the shadows at side, right? Because every sign has its high manifestation, but and its um, its trap, its its shadow, if you will, is when. Uh, you feel that you've got it. Okay, this, yeah, I finally understood what it's all about. Okay, the shadow of Sagittarius is be, becoming opinionated or even dogmatic or, or in extreme cases, uh, fanatic, fanatical, just plain and simple fanaticism because um, of, because, uh, the high point is that you're on this constant quest for the truth, right? But if you uh, if you re if you reach a point where you think that you've got it all, then uh, the journey is ended, and and then and then that that's already the the flip side, the shadow side of, of Sagittarius, and and for this reason also I admire. Krishnamurti. I mean, before I, I knew anything about astrology, I uh, I admired him in any case. <laughs> but when you see the correlations with with the, the birth chart and all its uh, um, themes that come up and and all of that, you I'm even all the the more uh, in awe because he took he's the embodiment of the high road of Sagittarius and everything else, big time. Okay, because he never rests and says. You know everything. I, yeah, this is God uh, exists, and this is what you should do. And there's uh, after death, this is what happens. And um, but he's always on, and he and that generosity of the full moon is that he wants to take you along on this journey with him. You know, but he's not going to provide you with the answers. Okay, that's that's the great teacher that he is. Uh, he wants to afford you the possibility to also become a, a philosopher and a thinker and an independent thinker at that. Now, and I want to end this video with taking note of the fact, to me it's mind-blowing, that on that day when he delivered the speech <clears throat> and made that definite exit, he freed himself, and that's what he wanted to help other people do, right? Um, his progressed moon formed an exact conjunction to his north node, okay? Which to me, again, just uh, strengthens the understanding, I mean, that he broke his karma big time with flying colors, um, his north node, which is, that's where the soul needs to evolve towards uh, in order to make evolutionary progress. Um, in Pisces, it's in Pisces. Pisces is the sign of spirituality and connecting with the divine. It's also about compassion and, and um, yielding to something greater than, than the self. And to me, this also, uh, I go back to Sagittarius, slightly different, but Sagittarius is, is about taking leaps of faith, okay? And kind of throwing all caution to the wind. And uh, um, just the notion that 
okay, then the, all notions of safety kind of have to be thrown out of the window because you have to follow your heart and that hunger and that understanding that uh, what you want to learn, study, experience is more important in the long term than your steady job or, you know, what you're going to live off in 40 years, okay? So, again, I mean, yeah, Krishnamurti, thank you. I applaud you for not becoming the person you were expected to become by those people, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, and we'll continue. We will continue. See you soon.